Um, so why don't we start this morning with Perry? You'd like to come up and have your say. Thank you. I'd now, I'd just let you know all know that this meeting is being live streamed on YouTube this morning. So big smiles, everyone. Um, thank you for allowing me to come and to say my bit. Um, I've come to request speed humps or java bars or shoot, um, any form of getting traffic to slow down on Hillcrest Road. Um, we've had several near misses in the last, well, in the recent times. Um, lots and lots of complaints about speeding cars. The police are getting a bit bored of it as well. They can't attend every, every phone call. Um, we've got motorbikes on one wheel at over 100 kilometres an hour cruising up and down our road. Um, two power poles have been taken out in the last sort of six months for speeding cars, and I think it's only through good luck rather than good management that someone hasn't been killed. Um, and I feel as a, as a father of three young children, um, I can't let my children play safely at home because of the traffic going past so fast. Um, yes, we build a fence around our property, but a speeding car is still going to come flying through that. So um, I'm fully aware of financial restraints and everything, but I think as a as an option or as a as a trial, um, you can get temporary speed humps put on. And they're bolted to the road. Um, if you want to see them, they've got them going into the prison. Um, I wouldn't want to put a price on them. I don't know how much they, they are, but it uh, must be a lot cheaper than actually building a, a proper chicane or traffic islands. Um, and I think it'll be a good test to see if it reduces the amount of complaints that we're getting and make our community safer. Um, and of course, I'm mainly voting here for Hillcrest Road. Um, I'm sure there are other streets in town that have got similar issues. Um, but yeah, our road is long, it's straight, they can see. Um, it leads up to Windsor Road, which seems to be one of our finest streets in town. So um, the traffic speaking past our house is, um, is dangerous. Um, yeah. Okay, you're okay with questions? Yes, absolutely. Okay, right, questions. Anybody? Uh, have you actually recorded, how do you record the speech on this? I, I can't. can't. Um, there, there is actually, now only we've been doing it, putting up those things that measure the speed. Yeah, sure. I've, I've also asked speed. the police to put a speed camera in here, um, or, or have a police car there all the time, but yeah, it's, um, they, they give me every excuse under the sun that they've only ever got two cars in town, and they're called out to domestic violence or other bits and pieces, and, and the people on the bikes especially, they seem to know when the police are not around. Um, and they do a good job, they have pulled a few over, you know, but, um, yeah, and, and of course, I'm aware that um, Jadabars, they're noisy. Uh, people slow down for them and they speed up to, you know, to have one outside your house, I'm sure it would be annoying. But I think if we put temporary ones up, let it be for six months and then move them to another street, it might educate some people. Um, Kelly, you have a question? Yeah, I will. How soon do you hope to see this happen? How soon do How soon? Are you hoping to see this happen? This afternoon. <laughs> well, it's earlier than I expected. So that's being a little bit impatient, maybe. But no, soon. It's been a, it's been a problem for years. Um, there's been I know there's been hundreds and hundreds of requests for service for these things to be put through, um, and it's a genuine problem. Someone's going to get hurt. Someone's going to get killed. Yeah. Ultimately, our town um, has three main pathways to get from one end to the other. Right, one is the main state highway, which does, it's the town centre, so there is traffic coming at night. I live on Broadway, so at night they speed right through the trucks as well. Um, there's the Hillcrest sort of um, demurral, which is that, like, that's the way you want to go. If you don't want to crawl through town, yeah. duck off one of those side streets, or there's the Rankin um, recreation, right? So those are our three that go from one end to the other. Um, and I know that it, has, it can't be looked in isolation, right? We can't say, we know that though that Rankin and Recreation is the heavy vehicle bypass. So chicanes or anything like that, that's all about there. Um, it's already supported to an extent. 
the other loop there, though, we can't actually look as a community board, as a council, at just Hillcrest, because when you look at the town, from Hillcrest all the way down through to Demille is actually, and then all of those feeder streets that go onto Demille, like right up in emails from residents on all of those streets who all want the traffic calming measures put yeah, along sure. all of those, because if you put one on one thing, then this happened in Kensington the last day, um, they've got Kite Street, King Street, Mains Ave, all of those ones that, that head off the, um, the Carmel Road there, Council, Whangarei Council put um, speed humps on all but two, then one, and then the final one, well, then those residents, the cars all knew, well, we'll just take this one to Zoom. So uh, it's unfortunately not an easy answer. There's no solution where we can say, let's do this. We have to look at it as a whole. As a whole, that's right. Yeah. Um, and that's where I'm at. Okay, so look, Perry, um, as you can tell, we don't have much, much sadness, and we have tried before. Um, but that's not to say that we shouldn't try, right? Um, and in fact, if you went to the mayor, he would say to you, "Come here." Yeah. Um, and you may have already gone to the mayor. I have no idea. On a personal uh, level, I have, but not on a. Yeah. Um, now, normally, he, he normally he sends you here when he doesn't want to say no himself. Um, <laughs> so what I'm going to suggest is that you go back to the mayor. Okay. Except this time, I want you to take a letter from the community board yeah. of support. Okay, so that, that, that says right to him, you've already been here, yeah. and we believe it's his problem. Um, now, it's not his problem, okay, but he has a, he has, um, a, he has the ability, inability to say no. Okay, um, he, he normally passes it on or says yes. But he's, he's, he, he, you've, already, you've already been to the place he's going to pass it on, so maybe he'll put his, his, uh, his weight behind it. So um, we are going to sometime the meeting hopefully discuss that and see if we can agree that we'll send a letter to you to take from there um, for that and see if, see what happens. Um, because I mean, look, quite honestly, it's not acceptable. And the, and the response I've always got from staff is, um, it's, the, it's the police problem. Um, so, and, it's, and it's clearly not. I mean, it's, and it, but it's also dangerous, you know, you approach some of these drivers to say, hey, slow down, and the abuse that you get from them sure. is crazy. Yep. Um, I had one car about two years ago now, I, I said slow down, and they, they swerved a little bit, but 200 metres up the road, the car's on two wheels. Yep. Now on a straight bit of road, that's pretty impressive speed to get your car on two wheels. Sure. You don't do that doing 50 kilometres an hour. But five minutes later, a van full of quite close finest was on my lawn ready to kill me. Um, because I it was like to tell them to slow down, you know, and it's like luckily the driver of the van got out and he recognised me, but otherwise, yeah, my teeth would still be lying on the lawn. Sure. Yeah. Um, and there, there is an item on our agenda to deal with this issue, and we, we request that our report investigating options in our agenda. Okay, right. Well, then we, we've already got it on our agenda, so we'll be able to do whatever we need to do, Gary, um, with, the, with the appropriate, as, as, as much leverage as we can muster. Um, Maybe we'll uh, invoke the Tiffany solution of um, signs saying you're a dick in your speed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sean. convened a meeting um, some time ago. It's a report. My observation of that meeting, we'll come to that, that it was singularly noted that not one councillor and not one community board member attended that meeting. And for me, I think it was probably one of the most important meetings that the community has held in this town. It's a disappointment in a way. I won't go through all of that because you can read it for yourselves. But the, the thing for me, the most important one of the lot, there is a two-acre section down there opposite the waste station. It has been on the go for the council to acquire that for public use for 25 years. 25 years is a little bit too long to wait. I would like to see some progress on it now for the benefit of the community. It's available, and the vendor is 
willing seller. It's been a little bit too long. It was advantage. There is ample room there for parking when it's needed. I would like to see a concrete pad where they, the, the kids in the town can do their wheel stands and something like that in safety on a concrete pad and show their skills with a hump track. And at the end, somewhere, possibly long after I've gone, at the end, I would like to see a swimming pool. Half-size Olympic, possibly. And as great as they said for that site for being a swimming pool, there is no drainage problem because the Papaha Waiki stream is now 15 feet below road level and it's roughly about the depth of a swimming pool. That is something that I would like to see as a matter of urgency. 25 years is just a little bit too long for something to happen. Leave it at that, Mr Chairman. Oh, I was going to ask you a question, Sean. Um, forgive, me for my, forgive me for my bad memory. Um, but you were on the community board for three years, and I'm sure you had an opportunity to bring up the purchase of that land. How, can you tell me how did you go with that? It's part of the 25 years, Mr. Chairman. It's something. It was nearly happening, and then for some reason it just didn't. Okay. Cool. Okay. Sorry. Um, just at the start there, you said that um, it was sad that you didn't see it. Oh, councillors or community board members at that meeting. But we, I, well, I did, I don't know if you guys did, I actually didn't get invited to that. And I happened to see it because someone sent it to me on Facebook. So that was a community meeting that was called, but I actually didn't know it was on. And when I finally did know it was on, it was too late to actually get there, unfortunately. So I apologise that I didn't make it. But um, I would say, that in the future, especially because you're so involved in, in, in our communities here, yeah, I would love to get the formal invitation to things like that so that we are in the know and we are able to get along. The likes of the Ohio Time, my um, residence meeting that they just had a um, week before last, I happened to get along to that because I got invited to go, so I think it was actually happening. So um, I hope that the community doesn't feel that we are being um, purposely negligent as community representatives, uh, because I think that for this one, that was a case of actually just not simply being in the loop about it. Um, so that's what I had to say about that. Um, obviously, I want to go over what a lot of these speakers have said. Um, a lot of it is from the looks, it, 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 their co-confer that we as a community board are very much aware of. Um, the bikes, rubbish, um, things like that. I guess if there are any specifics in what I would ask to anyone watching and, and to our um, group here too, is to, to touch base directly to where we can effect some help there. Um, and just a little, if I can use this here to, to give a little um, highlight on Council's new My FNDC portal on the website, which is mobile phone friendly, where if you see anything that you want to submit an RFS for, you can take a picture and send it straight away to Council and then it gets sort of tracked. So that's one way you can do it. Or calling Council itself, or touching base with any one of us and all our contact details are on the website. Cool. But thank you for um, for bringing this feedback to us. Yeah. And, and Sean, did you know um, also that um, the field where they used to ride with their motorcycles, I know it's Alan Pierce has a problem, um, has been secured, so hopefully there will not be any motorcycles on Lindmark Park, and therefore Lindmark Park won't be a destination for motorcycles. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. Um, I take your point and be much accepted that it was advertised as a public meeting, so that anybody could come along. Um, however, okay. Rome wasn't built in a day, and Thanks. that's the first step forward. Yeah, <laughs> hey, honey. Would you like to jump here and have a your say, please? Hi, Tina. Because you met my name was in a local young. It had a nap in the night. Nap to come here. I killed a good day, Mama, for Penny Hurricane, Toku Imo, no Tiku Tai, Ongapu, and Hokiana. Tina, we have a show. 
in our mic, in our great Tongi mic. I would like to first of all acknowledge our representatives on our board, and particularly Emma, who attended a meeting of Ke Pune Te Kuna of Kupenuku last night, so that we felt reassured that you, in fact, would know what our needs were. So, Tina and Emma, Tina Kwe Moto Haringa Maiki Te Tautoko To Iwi, and John, Ya Kwe Hoki, these people are really great. Me Kwe Hoki, Me Kwe Hoki, Haringa Maiki Te Whakaruma, it's extremely important that you come and you listen with your ears. Thank you, Marlima, for preparing this questionnaire for us. Kupuno Kupinuku is intending and has already taken over the responsibility for the campus that was run in the past by the farm, the um, Lofi. And the vision and the dream of the Hokianga people is that that facility can come back to the people. Already, and Malima, you had some slides that where you were going to have flicking through so that you can see the real people of Hukiana and just think how sincere they are. There's a day of Karakia, humble folk, humble Hukiana folk. There they are. They have said they would clean up and look at that queer in that drain, clearing up. Now, kitika tikatua. Each time you will see there are different people there. So I have heard that there was suggested that this was an elite group. No, it's not an elite group. Here we are. If you look, all people ready to get their hands dirty and working really, really hard. So those photographs are valuable because they give you a real life picture of what Te Puna or Kupe Nuku is all about. And what we're asking you for is for your support. If you look at our questions, you got the papers. I did some more at home because I'm a bit purple. I'm a bit blind. Have you got them yep. in front of you? Thank you to the community board for, for approving a grant so that this work can go ahead. Thank you for that. However, there's a hold up because we had a memorandum of agreement that was being worked through, and we had a promise that on the 1st of November that we would be allowed to have the lease signed. And we were all anticipating, look, look at everybody, cleaning up, preparing, being happy. And on the 2nd of November, we learned that there was a problem with the lease. Now, that's a devastating thing. We are from both sides of the harbour. In the in years gone by in the harbour, and it still is an asset for keep paying our tamori, keep paying our karate, but it's costly to go across to the harbour there for meetings all the time. So we ask you know, this question as number one. Kipuna or Kupinuku was granted some money to buy furnishings, and other items by the community board for which we are very grateful. Would it be possible to remove the sentence? The board stipulates that the funding granted will not be released until the memorandum of understanding and lease agreement for the site are signed. He partai dealer. That's a question we ask you. The reason for this is that there have been technical difficulties with the lease agreement, and it is now not likely to be signed until after the council meeting on December the 10th. Number two, would it be possible to give a license to occupy the site from today. This will enable us to continue cleaning it up and prepare for the community to be able to use it. Now you can see we're all there, but are we breaking the law? 
by being there. We're not intending to. But we do not have official permission, written permission, from anybody to be there. We've had verbal assurances and promises, but can you give us some written assurance that we are okay to be there? And if you look, or if you looked at the slides that were, were being shown, you'd see this huge enthusiasm from the people. To uh, Tolu, this is for the CEO. Can you put that question to him? He's not here, is he? So can you put that number three to him? And here's one from us asking, would it be possible to have a letter from council saying that there is the intention to lease the site for Te Puna or Kupinu? So the funding applications that we have in train will not be held up. This group has been proactive, not reactive. It's a very good group, and I do mean it to our Fui over here, to Ipu Epsilon and to Jimmy McLean. They are total workhorses. They have worked, and they have worked, and they have worked. And so to have some form of reassurance from council would be, would be wonderful, and I'm a little bit anxious now, you know, because I listen carefully to Sean. I just listened to Sean, and his tucking has taken 25 years. I don't want to be here. And right. So, Pani, are you, are you okay with us to ask questions? Yeah. Okay, okay right. Questions, and I've got a statement to make. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Pani, for all that you've been doing. Uh, you, have, you have our support, I'm pretty much sure, I'm sure you're aware of that. And I did write when I heard that um, that wasn't signed as promised on the 1st of November to Sean and asking for an explanation saying that you are seeking funding and also courses and that's that's having a detrimental effect on, on the success that you're doing there. And to date I haven't heard a, a response. So I'll follow that up again. This is just not really good enough. Um, and it's very disappointing in fact. And I think these requests now just for clarity, you highlighted the four stipulated funding grant will not be released until you know the MOU. Can as I understand, the problem is an, an issue lying with council. You've done everything in your side of the exact correct? Yeah. yeah, that's what I thought. And that's really my questions, and I think your requests here have been uh, are very valid and gracious. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did, in the, uh, the lease agreement and the memorandum of understanding, did you request any changes in that document? Is that why it's being held up? Or, or basically, were you prepared to sign the, the document that came from Council? It was some clause in there that was alleged that we changed. We didn't change it. We did not change it. The Kupuna did not change it. The, well, the opposition? <laughs> the opposition? It shouldn't be the opposition. Yeah. It's, it's the hierarchy. They changed it. Changed the agreement. Yeah, we're just the immortals. You've seen the pictures of us without the face. <laughs> and we ask you to the hierarchy to take the Okay, any other questions for Pani? Okay, Pani, I'll, I'll say a few words here. Okay, so firstly, um, we as a board are constrained by the Local Government Act and the Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act, okay, which, which tells us what we can and can't do at a meeting. One of the things that we can't do is discuss something unless it's on our agenda, unless at the beginning of the meeting, at a time where it's open to the public, the, the chairman says something like this. Today, we are going to discuss Honey's question that the board, that to, to, re, that to look at our requirement that the funding grant will not be released until, until the memorandum of understanding and the lease agreement for the site are signed, is going to be discussed this afternoon. Okay, the reason it's not on the agenda is because we didn't know about it, and the reason it can't wait, okay, is because it was supposed to be done two months ago. Yep. Okay, okay so, so I've, I've done that part, that's the first yeah. part, so we will deal with that today. Yeah. Um, the second thing is um, we have asked as a board um, the, that the council delegate us the responsibility of making the kind of decisions you're asking us to make for this, for this, um, this, this reserve. Uh, under the local government Act, Schedule 7, the council is required by law 
to consider that request. We made that request about a year ago. It has not been considered. Okay, so that so the, the, the council is in violation of the local government act schedule seven. Okay, um, so I'm going to do something else. I'm going to make a motion right now. Okay, and to hell with what they I mean. If they can't follow the rules, we don't have to follow the rules. Okay, and, I'm going, and, and it, it doesn't mean anything, but it will demonstrate our resolve. Okay, okay. I move um, that the Te Pura or Kupanuku. Is that going right? Yeah. Okay. Um, be granted access to the site as of today with the blessing of the community board. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll is, there, is there any discussion? <laughs> okay, all those in favour? Um, me move. John refuses second. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Now, you've got to realise that, that, that that's purely symbolic, honey. Um, um, but, I, I mean, we, we're on video today. Okay, so my statements about the, the, the council being in violation of the Low Government Act is, is now public across the world, as so is our resolve to help you. Okay, so um, thank you. Thank you very It's probably going to be taken as a declaration of war, but hey. <laughs> um, Kirsty, see what we can do for you. Oh, okay, thank you very much. I've got a letter that I'm going to read out to the council, the board members rather. Would you like one? Continuous footpath. 
Unfortunately, this bid was unsuccessful. A letter requesting another on-site discussion with the Traffic Safety Department, Sandy Morris, was sent to the Whanau District Council last week, and we are awaiting a reply. Now, the community remains very concerned about the speed of cars on Parnell Street, from the hospital to the car ferry. There is significant data which has been collected by the speed trailer organised and monitored by the road safety staff at Hokianga Hospital. This data can be provided and covers a significant period of time. The most recent data was collected on the 30 and the 31st of October and shows that a third and sometimes more than half of the total number of cars were over the speed limit. Okay, great. Kirsty, we can really rest. If you'd, like, if you'd like to have a seat for just for a minute and we'll get back to you. So we're going to just have a, a minute silence um, for the Remembrance Day traditional silence and then we'll get back to the meeting again. Okay? Cool, thanks. Kirsty, would you like to join us again? Okay, does anybody have any questions for Kirsty? I don't have a question, but I'd just like to say thank you, Kirsty, for this. Um, and I know this has been going on for a long time. At the beginning of this year, I sent, um, well, I, you know, I put in an RFS. There were photographs that were sent from the hospital as well. Um, and I rang the other day to find out exactly what's happened to that. They've apparently been lost in the system. And so they had to find a new RFS number. But I think this is probably bigger than an RFS now. And I thank the people in Darwin for what they've done because I'm definitely well aware of it. Yeah. Well, the piece I didn't quite get to was that uh, our resident police officer is in support of traffic calming. He has been to a number of our uh, resident association meetings and does agree that traffic calming is necessary, also the lowering of the speed limit in the township area. So yes, Emma, it has been going on for a long time and it is a big, um, it is a big um, yeah. breath, really, to um, try and slow the traffic for such a length. Our chairperson, Steve Moranga is keen for us to focus just on the downtown, but many residents live the length of that Parnell Street, and we'd like to see the whole picture. But I understand the community board's position, and at this point, we are just asking for your support. Nobody, I'm not quite sure where to go from here. So, two questions. Um, did the, the engineer authorise the signs to be put up? Were they put up? Yes, they were. They were indeed. Okay, and secondly, the speed trailer, is that one of those speed trailers that says you're doing 50 kilometres an hour or 53 kilometres an hour slow down? Uh, it doesn't say slow down, it just registers your, it may say slow down. Yeah, no, it, does say, it does say slow down. Okay, okay. Yeah. The speed limit yeah. and, and did that have any effect on the traffic itself? Quite possibly. Uh, it is actually the, um, the, the hospital staff who are contracted to the road safety um, department, I guess, of the transport department, who tow the trailer in and put it in various places at different times and monitor it. So, yes, I'm sure it does. I mean, I'd love to know whether or not it actually does slow well, down. Therefore, in as yeah. much as the ones that are up on 
um, link posts that read your speed, they must slow people. It is, it is affected. It is okay. I'm now on the school bus at all. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I remember I used, I used to live in England and um, one of the things that slowed they had, they had a trailer out there except is without rather than just saying you're doing more than 50k it actually said it put my my, my um, registration plate across the top it said slow down and boy the water that gave me to slow down so Mr Chair um, so it's easy to say yeah so a quick reason thanks Kirsty um, we uh, Louis actually called us in in that when we started at 9.30 on, on this Right. One thing he mentioned, and we haven't mentioned, so I'm going to ask you that question, that is, he said there's a danger to cyclists who are, who the footpath is too narrow for them, and they're on the road. Yes. Um, so are there quite a few cyclists on the road? Yes, there are indeed. Um, we are not exactly part of the, the cycleway, but many cyclists come through from the north. There are always bunches of cyclists, and they are, yes, um, either on the road or trying to squat on the footpath. But I know it is a two-pronged approach. The footpath is not safe, and in fact, it peters out, and the speed is too fast. So it's, um, some might say, why aren't we just focusing on one, which is what I tried to do at the annual plan. It's not the right place, but I just didn't want the opportunity to pass. But, and, and, and another related question, so thanks for that. that that's in terms of what's been said, and that's in terms of... Uh, where's the aged care? Do you have not, and, and, and the question I'm driving at is, is there people on mobility scooters or whatever trying to use that between the hospital and the town or vice versa? Well, often there are people with walking sticks trying to get up to the footpath and they come to a point where the footpath just disappears. And people with prams, there's no way for them to go. So is, there's a place for footpath though, is there? Uh, well, only yeah. it was Cantonese South. I mean, the topography is pretty tricky. You know, yeah. But I mean, that's where the money comes into it, I guess, is that properly built. There is one person in a wheelchair that uses a footpath. Yeah. Yes. I mean, we are a really um, accommodating town. It's a really lovely place to live. Lots of people love this. And of course, we do also accommodate the people who come from the north side, leave their cars on the north side, and walk to the hospital. So, okay, that's another good point. So, that's a good one too. So, that's my last question. Is people that were, uh, you know, obviously cyclists and walking traffic going between the hospital and the town? Very much. Thank you. Very much. A lot of the cyclists are also school kids. Yes, there are. And, I mean, and they do take chances at times. Well, I don't know if you're aware, but the footpath exists at the moment, and uh, anybody walking from the ferry to the hospital has to cross the road three times. So that's quite an ask for um, young, young kids. What, what's the name of the road along the bottom, past the bottom line? What's the name of that road? <laughs> okay, it's, I mean, I, and, I, and I don't know about this, but if, if, if the, that seems to be a better contour by for, for putting a footpath in. If, if there was a footpath from the ferry to the hospital via that way, would people use it or do they need to go along well, that road? They may do, but when they got past the point of being able to use that road, they'd go up onto the Parnell Street and that's the point at which the footpath disappears. Oh, okay. So it's quite near the hospital is where it um, just... You have to go past the school yeah. in order to go down that road and around. Okay. So that's, yeah, that would be a problem. That's just, okay, we've got you on a list of things to discuss this afternoon. Okay. So I'm sure we'll get to yeah. it. Thank, Thank you very much. Uh, Rob. Got it. Get it, Rob. I'm really just here to uh, follow up on my paper trail. <laughs> and life. <laughs> um, bring it here this time, which it is, yes. and that's the junction. First of all, I'll go with, the, I, I put you all a photo of the rubbish at the Rawani Junction. Yep. Um, the rubbish point there, and it gets picked up on a Monday. Here we are today. Oh, now, Rob, just, just, just so you don't waste your time, um, we had a bit of a meeting about this. We had a meeting, a meeting before we started this morning. Okay, and, and you can carry on in a minute if you need to, um, but Louis, Alan and Emma have been given delegations from the board to go out to the community and solve this damn problem with a budget. 
Um, so we, we by all means carry on, but I'm just letting you know that, that, that we're under borders decided this is a, another priority for them. So, so you going to solve this problem with the council? Uh, it will be solved with the council and the and the um, waste management company. So there's a three prong approach. Yeah, that's, that's our that's our that's our um, intention. Yeah. Because I did put a proposal to waste management. Yeah. I run the recycle plant in Lawani. Yeah. And I told them that that has to be picked up. It's just a mess out there. Yeah. I showed you the pictures. Yes. Um, and I'm prepared. As I already walk, I already run the recycle. I would go out there every day, seven days a week on my unit and pick up every bag, bring it back into the container and sort it. If you want to leave or have a rubbish area that's not manned, it's going to end up like it is. Pathetic, you know? Yeah, sure. So I gave them the option. Uh, for a certain price, I will go out there every day and pick up every bag and you're not until you come to the decision where that's not going to be a drop-off point. So, all right, that's cool. Okay, I'm sure, sure, I'm sure you're going to be part of the group, so we'll yep. be, we'll, um, these guys will be in touch. Yeah, okay. well, right. yep. this is summer coming up, so we need it done. Thank you, Rob, for offering to do that. I think yep. that's great. All right, the other thing is um, at the junction, the walker and the rowboat, the application is there, and also our beach, the sand for the beach. So, you have to discuss that now, I suppose, because you haven't discussed it, have you? No, that's, that's, that's one of the last that's things. Probably, so, that, yeah. so, Louis, um, I did say that we used to do um, fundraising all the time, the same people get hammered every time, so this is why I'm thinking we have no Christmas carnival this year, we had no money from the council or from the community board last year for the Christmas carnival, so we want some sand on our beach. Louis said that he will uh, donate $1,000. That was $200. Oh, shit, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> All right. But anyway, we just feel that if we can get that application that I put in, the sand for the beach, I'm going to organise the whole thing and do it. And the, uh, the other one is for the, the concrete and everything at the, at the junction. So that's all I, all I really got to say. It's followed up. Excellent. Okay. Any um, questions for Rob? Yep. So that sand you're getting delivered to the beach, do you want that sand delivered every year? Yes, absolutely. Remember we, we spoke right at the very first opening here this year. I said I'd like that to be put on the agenda where it's an automatic thing every year. Um, 20 metres of sand every year would be awesome. Okay. Yeah, that could go on there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. Are you going to speak about tracks for kids as well? Pardon? Were you going to speak about tracks for kids as well? I just, I just got you. No, I just put that because that, it comes under my trick. Oh, okay. the, um, yep. the trust is where you've okay. got to put the money into. No, that's fine. All right. Okay. No more questions? Thank you. Okay. okay. Thanks, Rob. Thank you, Rob. Okay. Uh, what we're going to do now is just go out of order. And we've got a couple of people who come here specifically for around 11 o'clock. Um, so we're going to get, we're just going to deal with those people and we'll get back to the public forum. Um, Graham, you here? Yep. yep, come on up. Good morning. I'm representing Taitoka at Time Bank, and we've come to apply for some funding to help with the cost of a shared office space and code for, for Time Bank. So I'll just explain now briefly what Time Banking is and why we want to have a base in Coca Cola. Time Banking is a community of people in Kaitoko, we have 300 mem 300, over 350 members, and we help each other by sharing skill and experience, and we also help and support vibrant and healthy communities. I'm one of four Time Bank coordinators, and I look after the Hotianga and Kaito. We have our individual members, and one example of how this works is during lockdown. We, we had a lot of members in Time Bank who were vulnerable people, and we organised for somebody, to go, somebody else in Time Bank to go and do their shopping. So if they went and did shopping for somebody, then afterwards that person would then give them time credit, one time credit for every one hour that that person went shopping for them during the lockdown. The, the, the principle was that one hour is one time credit, and that was quite useful when people went shopping during lockdown because often people might end up queuing for half an hour to get into the supermarket, knowing that they still get half a time credit for their time. We also have a 
also have lots of organisations who belong to Time Bank, and they vary enormously, everything from the uh, the Rauranga Whanau Recovery Hub in Kaikaui, which supports XP people with a lot of volunteers, and they get no funding whatsoever. So all those volunteers who just signed them up recently can now get time credits for their time and why they're helping XP people to keep clean. Somebody else, they use that time credit, but somebody else has come to know their law for We also have, on the other end of the uh, range, we have an organisation, the Hokian Toastmasters Club, who allow people to come to the Toastmasters Club and get public speaking skills and confidence. Without paying, they just give a time credit, which the Hokian Toastmasters Club then passes on to the venue or to somebody who's in the Toastmasters Club. So like that, we can support each other. Why we'd like to base in Coco is well, one reason is that the Coco community plan simply says in there that, that Coco wants a time bank under the economic section to start and operate a time bank to share skills and experience. So that's one reason why I focus on Coco. We also have 26 members of time bank in Coco. And it's quite a, I go across there every Thursday and spend the day there. And it's quite a central point. We have three people in Mitty Mitty, we have another three in Waimamatu, we have uh, in Gordon, we have Jaga, Jaga, Jarrod out there doing a lot of stuff with uh, Marai agriculture. Um, we have a, and then on the south of the end, we also have a lot of people up at um, Waimamatu. They now, we now have 14 members there at the new eco centre there, we're supporting that eco centre. Time banking was originally started by the Eco Centre in Kaitai. And because of Time Bank, they've been successful and grown to what they are. And our vision is that we're going to have eco centre resource centres throughout. And then Hokiang and uh, Kaiko are like one in Kaikoe, one in uh, Kogoko, and one in Wainamu, who's, who's going strong. They're going strong already. Um, the, the funding will be used to help support the running costs of an office space in the Herald building there. The, uh, the, there's a very strong group there who've got that Herald building going as a community centre, but they're struggling with the running costs and we would like to support them. They give them the use of an office with a computer and Wi-Fi, and they've been very gracious about it so far. I've, the only support now to give them is out of my pocket occasionally with a bit of money here and there. We'd like to actually give them ongoing support so we can use it as a base for all the OTM. Um, my original, our original funding was also to think about an office space in Kaikoe, but to be honest, I'm just focused on the Okianga at the moment, so we'd just like to ask for half the money originally applied for, for, for the Okianga, and maybe next year then we put another application for an office space in Kaikoe. But at the moment, I'm more focused mainly on Okianga. So our uh, application, we'd just like to ask for half the original. Okay, any questions for Graham? I have two questions, but you've already answered it, so thanks very much. You know, I think, yeah, and I think I'll support that. Sure. Uh, quick question, Councillor Chair. Um, we heard about the importance of community and talked about this is with the council and talking about social procurement and the like. Would, uh, would someone be interested in some sort of arrangement with the council, particularly if you've got volunteers doing something where we can actually um, mutually help in some manner? Yes, we would like to. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, focus on Hokianga, but I really want to get. I live just outside Kaikoura, but I really want to focus on Kaikoura and the council and all some of the organisations. The underlying principle with time bank is that one hour gets one time credit, and each person has an account, and then they, if they get help, they give the time credit to someone else. Somebody help. Uh, they, they get receive it, but they ask for help, then they do that. And we could work with the council like that, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, I was just in the breakdown of the um, of the costs um, for the the Herald space, the letter there says a contribution of fifty dollars per week. Um, and here you're asking for two thousand two hundred and sixty one for rent venue hire. Was that for a calendar year or...? Yeah, that's for a calendar year. Now, I will mention with that, why I'm asking for half the amount, not just that 2,200, is that 
When Donna did the calculation, she calculated it on how often we'd be using it. Does the cost actually go 52 weeks a year? <laughs> and also we've got the Wi-Fi, so we'd like to contribute something to that. So that's why I'm actually asking for half of that original amount, which would be 3,500, not just the 2,250. And how many hours a year, how many time credits a year, what's the turnover? I mean, how many, how many time, time credits a year do you have uh, uh, for, for, for your area? Oh, uh, I could look that up. I don't have the top of my head, but there's thousands. Yeah. Thousands. I mean, um, yeah, literally. Well, when I first started doing this, I've been doing it about a year at the Time Bank. The last six months I've started operating as a, as a coordinator, and now I use Time Bank at least once or twice a week. And so, and I would, that'd be like a couple of hours, so I'm using it about five hours a week, just for my personal. Yeah. As a coordinator, we get funded for 10 hours a week. I'll probably do another five or 10 hours a week, which I just get time credits for. <coughs> but there's thousands and thousands, and the potential is kind of for a lot more to happen. With the Code Code a community plan, their vision was that an economy like Code Code, first of all, would do it through something like Time Bank, no money, and help them. And that would strengthen the community enormously. And then we could think of thousands every week, no, not COVID, but thousands every week. Um, and we're growing dramatically since the lockdown, because during lockdown, people realised the value of having a strong, another strong community network. People might have a variety of church, but this is another network they can you know, log into. Look, I'm sure you're going to come back at some stage, whatever the result is today, because you're yeah. good. Can you bring that information? But how many? Uh, with you each time, yeah. I can just look at my phone now if you like and give it to you. Oh, look, yeah, just, just look. So, so just sometime before you leave, just let that money go. Before you leave, I can have anything else. Question. Uh, your, your funding application is for 2764. Are you saying you want to cut that in half? Uh, no. Uh, that was the original one. There's been a later one. That's yeah, the one we're one. talking about. The, the later one was just a total of 7,122, which included the Kaito. Okay. Which, I've got a copy here. Should, would you like Oh, it? no, we'll get that off. We'll, 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 we'll talk to Catherine. So. Yeah, that was what we uh, We'll deal with that. We'll deal with that. We'll deal with that. We'll deal with that. We recently applied about two or four months ago. But the very same thing we were saying was the next one today. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What, what is your, obviously, uh, going in the area of building and, and so on, is, is, is that something new? But what I was trying to get a handle on is what is your total uh, operational cost? The data, the weekly operational cost is about $100. Now, your, your total time being total operational cost, because obviously there is some cost somewhere. Um, do you, have you factored that, that in at all? My personal cost. Time being. Oh, time being cost. No, we get we do get some funding for our time and for our own cost. This funding we're applying for now is just the use of that building. Yeah. Is that what, what is total funding you receive? Total funding, that's on there too. Oh, okay. Um what was it? Sorry, excuse me. Uh, for the for myself, for the Hopi area, Kaiko area, we get total funding of um twenty three thousand. So the organisation you work for, you signed an employment agreement and so your wages, so your employment was only going to be for so long because of the funding they received. Have they got more funding to keep employing you? And if they haven't, will you still require that space? Yeah. Um, when I signed that thing, they made it quite clear that they've got six months funding. We may not be able to get more. If um, I'm retired now, so I'm really doing this to give back to the community. So if I don't get funding for those 10 hours, I'll continue. I might reduce the number of hours I do, but I'll still continue doing it. And still, um, my partner and I, we live over here in Kaiko now, but we, my partner comes from the Hokianx. So we have close ties there, so we like going across there. So we're still so you'll still need the office space because you'll be... It would be very really useful to have that office space. I'm using it now. <coughs> and it's just through the grace of people like Jackie and people like that who let me use it for free. And I've got Wi-Fi and a computer, they've got a rural office for me and everything. I just want to help them with that. And they also want to restore that building. And they're going for a lot of funding, a lot of work that's going to be there. So I think the least that time they can do is actually contribute 
a little bit of $50 a week towards the running cost. And it's not just myself who works for me every time, that some of the other couple just the time. Is the public Wi-Fi in Kongo? Uh, it's quite limited. There's some in the, uh, the library. Okay, cool. Okay, uh, Mopo. Uh, I just had a question I thought of. I, based off, you said you had 26 members in Kongo at the 2018 census Kongo from Broadwood has a population of 726. And so specifically for there, but also for the wider Northland Time Bank, um, I wonder if you guys have like a growth strategy or a way where you want to grow the membership into the Time Bank. Yeah, we did, we did the whole marketing thing. We had, um, <laughs> there was these, because of lockdown, there was these people sitting in Oakwood on bugs. And there was this woman there, two women actually on different bugs, who, from Canada, who specialised in strategic planning and management, and they joined Time Bank. So we got them to do a whole strategic plan for us for free through Time Bank. This would have cost like tens of thousands of dollars if we'd been in Canada. Um, and their plan really is, is that we multiply ourselves, really. So I'm starting to get like my mum, who I have a person there who's looking after that and I just support them. And they're just getting time credits, although my mum, who has actually got some funding themselves. So I'm actually getting more Time Bank coordinators, and I see my role in is the oversee more people coordinating in different areas, one in Kauru, Kauru, one in um, local Māori person, Kai Kauru. Graham, the newsletter. Oh, and we also have a newsletter. Thanks to this committee. Yeah, Jackie, Jackie is involved in the uh, Kauru, Kauru there. Um, Bruce is doing a newsletter for us, which you can see that we're out around the Kauru, Kauru area. So we're promoting it like that, but it's really, we are quite limited by our, you know, times we have. And it takes us quite a while to bring, orientate each person we bring in to explain how it works and get them going. Cool. We want more people doing that for us full time criticism. Excellent. Okay. Thank you, Ray. Yeah, thanks. Sure. Thank you. Morning, everybody. Morning. 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 To um, ask for money for the big event we've got this weekend. We're lucky enough to have the modern team, Tiny Pass, playing Boycato, down at the Rugby Club. And unfortunately, only a couple of months ago, we were confirmed as the venue. And as it's been televised on Sky TV, the club needs to um, put down our lights on Central. So hence why we've come to the board to ask for the 3,976 to take down three lights so Sky TV can actually televise the game. And also I have just been told this week, um, if I'm able to, um, district facilities um, will not um, water blast the grandstand for us. So I'm asking for an extra $500 on top of what I'm asking for. Our volunteers have already done a whole heap of work to get the club up to scratch. And unfortunately, it's a bit disappointing because the grandstand is a council um, facility and it should be maintained by council and the district's facility staff have said just because it's um, Northland Rugby, they should have the money. But Northland Rugby haven't got the money and it's another expense what has fallen back onto us as, as the club. So I know it is a bit cheeky to ask. I was just told this on Monday, so I had no chance of adding it to our application. So I'm asking if there is a possibility and if there is a few dollars there, could we ask for an extra $500 to have the green steam last for our game on Saturday? And plus being televised, it's going to go nationwide, so it's going to put Kaikui into a really good light on Sky TV. So that is all. Is there any questions? Yeah, so you're going to lower the lights? Yes. I noticed uh, there were two two prices in there. For, are you going to raise them back up as well? Yes. So the price entails taking down and putting back up. 
Certainly not cheeky to ask. Sorry? It's certainly not cheeky to ask. Especially if council is a bit of a word. And ask, right here. No, 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 no. Well, you, you look into there. Do you want to, have you got a question? Um, why not the Wilson necklace is coming to our town? Um, unfortunately, well, unfortunately, for me, because I'm going to attend this game, but fortunate for my cousin, it's his 21st over the Wine Bale survey, so I have to go to bed. Oh, you can do both. Um, <laughs> but, um, but this is a really awesome thing for our town. Um, it is concerning to hear that there's something going on with water blasting our uh, um, grandstand, and I'm sure that when we get to it, that due consideration will be given to that cheeky extra tunnel there for a year for the $500 to do so. Um, I guess for me, we're looking at um, Something like this, right, we need to lower our lights for it and then put them back up again. Um, this is something that, like, I would love to see on annually on the circuit. I know that we got a, a pre-match one, so it wasn't a case of needing to do something like that. Um, four grand, the value, what is the value that this will bring to our community for four, for 3,976 plus 500? Um, is almost priceless. Um, I guess for me, is there a case here where we have to lower our lights? Um, is there a case here where it would be better to permanently do something like that for our rugby club so it's always prepped? Yes. For for um, you know a provincial match that's coming to us to be otherwise. Well, and what could to, that look like? Yeah. Yes, and just to add to that, to Council Mukul, um that was the only way we were going to get this game here if the club would get um, put those lights down. So it's a very good point that you are saying that um, if we want future matches here, that's what will have to happen every time, especially if it's televised. Yeah. That um, those three, and it's only three out of six, which we're really lucky, only need to come down. So that's a really good point that if we do get another game. If I'm still involved with the club or someone else comes forward, we've got the guarantee that yeah. it's been talked about and hopefully it oh, won't be an issue. That's yeah. my question too, sorry. On this one, it's got here the adults are $20 and children are 10 um, I just wanted to double check because I've been telling people that adults were 15 yes, and I'll children are free. Yes. Is that right? They, um, Northland Rugby <laughs> Union changed their pricing this week as well. So it is now um, zero to 14 years free, and 15 plus years is $15 and sit anywhere. So if you want to sit in the grandstand, it will cost you $15, but you've got to be first in, first serve. So it's a very reasonable price, and it's good that the rugby union has dropped their pricing because to go and watch them at, what is it called now, Seminoff Stadium, it's like $25. So. Okay. And we have got six local boys from the mid-north who are actually in the team um, playing this weekend, so, which is really good for Okay, so Cheryl, what, could just explain, and I know this is a leading question, but why is the match in Kaiko and what is the likelihood of us getting another televised match in the future, and what are the likelihood of other high-level but not these kind of matches in the future? Uh, why we were chosen is because Seminoff is getting um, done over, so all their lights have been pulled down and been re-put up, so Mitre team cannot play at their home ground, so that is hence why we've got this game. And Northland Rugby have said that we most of the all games with how well we did with the Super 15 pre-season game, um, that the Kaipu Rugby grounds are the ideal place to hold a big event because infrastructure and parking, it was cost next to nothing and everyone made a profit, I think. Was and, and, and your competition? What's the likelihood of us getting a game from your competition? From the Farrah Oh, Farrah Well, we were supposed to have one, but COVID. Uh, but next year, it is a likelihood that there'd be more Farrah games. Are they televised? Yes, so that could be as counselling. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just wanted to know what the 
So that could be an issue too, that we would have to pull down lights for the latest games. Okay, so... That, only because I'm not going to remember when the time comes up. But <laughs> in, in June this year, there's a um, there's going to be, I presume, an events infrastructure. June. June, 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 like, uh, grant, yeah, June, June coming up. Infra infrastructure fund. July. July, is it? Next financial. Okay, so is it still in the long term plan? Okay. Um, look, I mean, I know generally speaking, the West doesn't put anything in for that, um, and I know most infrastructure is in for that. So it might actually be a fairly Fairly low cost for the for the um, for the benefit given. So, I mean, between you and your people, <laughs> can you remember that? Sure, we're going to work together closely. Great, great. Okay. And so, so for today, we our community board will be the saving grace for this event. Coming to the table to lower these lights in to water blast our stadium so it looks nice on TV yes. for the country and the world to watch. Um, but future, looking forward in the future and how we want to encourage annually to get, you know, a televised game in our town, um, it would be great to access that events infrastructure fund, especially so looking at permanently lowering our lights so we're always prepared, right? Yeah, well, I, mean, I imagine, what, just moving them back 10 metres to the other side of the, the back against the fence and, and putting more lights there would probably be good enough, wouldn't it? So it's behind the telephone? Yeah, well, the problem is, because the way, because the Sky people came up and they done the whole footage, and we just couldn't understand why you couldn't see through the lights on. But apparently it's all got to do with TV. But even, they're not used to having lights along the field. They're used to having, playing the big stadiums where the lights are just in the corners. Yeah. So if we were to change our lights, we would have to look at putting them into the corners and things. First of all, that, that $500 for water blasting a council asset, which they should be doing anyway, mm -hmm. um, so I'm a bit disappointed on that. Uh, that quote came from? Um, just um, Rec Services have offered to do it for, for us. For that price. To do it for that so price. So they have the capacity to do it, but they want us to pay for it. Yeah, yeah. well, because so, they need to get paid to do it. Yeah, so second, the second question is, with those three lights only that you need to move, and I did ask uh, the chair this question prior to that, so I'm having a solution. But is there a way you can move those back and then and then maybe put four lights in this place, which would allow that to happen at a much lesser cost than putting everything in the corner? That's just, right. just on the US one, on the one side, right? Yeah, on the one side. To give that some consideration, because that could be something that we can look at for some different solution, because I think that's a bit of a Yeah, because I think we need to if we... Because it looks like they all want and how to are the lights going? I mean, I know. Yeah, how are the lights going? Well, there we go. Great until COVID. We were having night games three times a week. Because sometimes it was five times. There were double bookings. So it's been a saviour having those lights at um, Central. Like kids, adults. It's not just rugby. Um, and it's not just the Kaipu Rugby Club. We've had league teams um, from around the district play their games here. We've had junior teams from around the district. So it's not just quite through rugby using it. It's a, it's a community asset to see how the club sees it. And um, they just pay their um, hourly rate and we've had no problems. So it's been really great. Well, just, just a quick question which relates to these wood uh, blasting. Um, since uh, would you consider some other person, group, company come along and for five hundred dollars would blast the um, stadium to, uh, to get it nice? When's it going to be done? It's got to be done by Friday. Yeah, and it's got to be done by Friday. What I'm saying that is because that would be a, a wake up call for the as well. Yeah, we're making money for because we've got water blasters, but um, our volunteers water blasters just don't do the trick. So uh, and research. Yes. Yeah. 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 And then we have to hire it and just but well, research to see if they can come. I'm not asking you to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone got questions? Yeah. 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 Thank you, Cheryl. So, thank you. It was a great job. Okay, you're right. Trevor, are you here? Yes. Come on up. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm Trevor Jones. I'm um, here to address the 
on page 34, the road naming uh, new subdivision. Uh, yeah, I see you've got a little data here. Uh, this is our third attempt to give it a name. We tried very hard to comply with the waiting issues and the council guidelines. Uh, we had uh, two sets of three names rejected because either we had Koku in the name, Arbor, uh, Hokianga, Point, and so on. Uh, we're now trying to get a, a name for our private road, our private road, I might add. And so we, were dribbled, we went through the application process, and either the council lives or Google, or there's some clause that appeared before this halfway through, um, rejected it. And so this is our third uh, application for a name there. Um, I don't know what else I can say. Okay, so look, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. Intrigued? I am. Um, so it's a private road? Right? Yes. I, I guess the question is, why does it matter to anybody else what you call it? Uh, we apparently don't have that discretion. Um, council and their, and their resource consent uh, dictated that we had to have a road there. Okay. Um, so here we are. There we go. Okay, any questions? Yeah, I just had an interesting question there. Why, why rise? Because a rise is a roadway going to a higher place and position, according to the papers. Yeah. You're going, it's sort of flat. I know. It was kind of like we looked at it and it was like, OK, it's not an avenue. We went through all the names, OK, of what you can apply. And we live there. And now, some, many people said it was heights, you know, heights. Well, heights appeared to be a little bit tossy to me or to us. And uh, that's something you can your rear or somewhere like that. And so we looked at the lay of the land and it comes up from a cove and it comes up to the brow of our property and it goes back down to another cove on the other side. So it appeared to, you know, to us, it's always, we've always called it our lives. And so we thought, well, that name fits our, our personal... Um, we live there, that's what we call it, lives, or the plateau. And so it just seemed to fit right. Really. It wasn't trying to get out of the square. It just seemed to fit the, the criteria better than any other names on the, uh, the agenda list that they had two A4 pages of what you can and can't do. Yeah. And there was another question. Who, who is going to maintain this road? I am. It's a private road. It's a private road. It's yes. a, yeah. It's a yeah. Any more questions? Side where I was intrigued about. Yeah, and yeah. it still just goes to the same point about the reason there is a name in the first place is really predominantly about emergency services. And sure. If you're looking for those entities to quickly identify and respond, please have a bit of clarification on naming prevention helps that. Okay, right. I mean, just out of interest, does anybody on the board ever have a, I mean, it's against us for any reason? No. Okay, so we'll, we'll deal with you right now. Uh, I move that the Taito Hokianga Community Board, pursuant to the Council's road naming and property addressing policy 2125, name a private road as June Rise that is currently addressed as 594 Kotu Loop Road, or for naming as the map. Mark? Yeah. Do it again. All those in favour? Thank you. You're done. Thank you very much. Okay. We've talked a long term. Thank you. Cheers, Brian. Okay, have a good day. Right. Mr. Chairman? Yes, I've got that information. Chris, oh, you just need to believe it or you're fine? Yep. Thanks. Barbara, are you here? Billy. No, Barbara? Uh, oh, I was We are the antique. <laughs> oh, okay, um, yes, right. Can, can, I, can I just say that the land is actually an old sand dune? So that was one of the, not only do we look at the sand dunes over the Hokianga, but the actual land was a sand dune at one stage so from our geological um, um, research. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and having said that, I think it looks like public forum is over, so we're going to hang on. Charmaine, come on up. What time do you want? Kia ora. Hi. My name is Charmaine Perry. 
and I'm part of 19. I'm being trusty in no top I'm here concerning our road. What are you going to do with our road? Come on, we, we've had, we've put in a lot of complaints and everything about our road. No one's done anything. We've had three accidents. Lucky the school bus didn't get, the mail bus didn't get killed on the road. We've had three accidents, car accidents, to do with the logging trucks and our roading. Now, it'd be nice if I could take one of you fellows out with me to a right to go talk and, and have a look at our roads. It's very disgusting. You can go in one hole, then you're going to fall in another hole. You don't even get far. Okay. We nearly lost the school bus last week. Okay, so we are, we're, now, Charmaine, the, the, the way we do things here is we, we ask you questions to get to get more of a, more of a so we will. Um, we, we're probably not going to be able to do anything today, um, and, and in fact, it's only, we can only pass it on and, and ask for more information. So, are there any questions for Charmaine? You know, yeah, yep. John. Uh, that is power bridge, which was something that's been to be done for many, many a year. Um, and a, and a bane of uh, my life in many ways, but council's ever, uh, not responding. Can you please tell me if that's been done? There's a new bridge. The, road, the bridge. Bridge. Yeah, it's been done, but it isn't open yet. Okay, thank you for that. Now, in terms of the road, um, you were saying you almost lost the school bus. What happened? Yep. There? What lost there in terms of what? Off the road? Accident, bro. Okay. So We've really had three car accidents. Three One nearly got killed. Sorry, one got killed. Just about. Just about, yeah. So there's three car accidents and almost a near miss for the school bus hitting a logging truck. Yeah. Thank you. And the roading is, 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 the, is the thing of it all. Yeah, and it's the quality of the roads. I know um, Otawa area is a, is a major area for logging at the moment. Well, I don't know how long to go for. And also... Oh, they have these two. And also um, continuously all the time in terms of dairy as well. Uh, roading is not something we do as a, as, as a community board, but thanks for coming to us and I'll pass that on to Northern Transport Alliance and ask Andy to give a response. I'm going to leave a contact number and I'll make sure you get that response as well. Oh, now, show me just quickly. Um, the accidents, were were they attended to by the police? And there is yeah. a lead, they call me, excellent call. Yeah. Yeah, that's no, great. And they told me about it and I said to them, they need to come and see the council for the roads. Yeah, no, it's, no. The part, part of the reason is when the council, when the when this roading staff justify coming out and spending money, and um, they use the fact there's been accidents if they've been reported as a justification. So it's, it's just it's just it was just a question: are they, have they been reported? And if they have, that's a good thing. Cool. Can we make contact with you yes. this afternoon, and I'll go yes. and look and take yes. photographs and send them. This would be really okay. lovely. Okay. 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 Yeah. If you bring your phone contact number or something. I've got to get some. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. okay. I don't have an email. I can't afford that out there. We haven't got a reception. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Thank so you, you can keep in touch with me. Yeah. I'm Somebody else. Sweet day. Sweet day. Have a good day. Thank you. 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 Murray. Yes. Finally. Yeah. Good morning, people. Good morning. Good morning. Well, there needs to be a thanks go out to the police. This motorbike's calmed down a fair bit. Thanks probably to Lindmark Park Sports Hall for making sure they can't get into the field, therefore there's no reason to come down. Yeah. You are. Well, is all over. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Can I? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, the uh, bike's going up the street. Oh, yeah, there's been a little bit of pushback from them, but, um, but I have seen the police come into Windsor Road and to Windsor Places. And I heard they had an operation with a drone going on that uh, spotted where the bikes were going to. <laughs> so that's all good. But there's been a little bit of pushback from them. But, yeah, we'll push back down the road. Um, now, yeah, Moko, the um, public health thing uh, with the uh, spinning in the main street and all that, you, you able to get anything to get? And the children making up the sign, you know, posted up. No, no, I didn't um, actually anything like that other than just pushing again for that to be a message that 
our school and our other schools be able to ultimately for the families to understand that that's something that they need to educate their children on and for them to stop doing. So other than um, other than when seeing behaviour like that happening, actually piping up to say something about it, I haven't moved any further on that. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, right. Now, um, the water. Now, there were water restrictions last year. And uh, one of them come out was the, the no watering gardens. Well, um, and I, I heard it was a $20,000 fine if you done it. Yeah, yeah. But um, there, uh, people grow their food. Yes. So um, uh, there, they should be allowed to water. That's a garden. That's the produce for themselves. Yep. And uh, like, I had uh, people come and try and see whether I've been watering my garden. Oh, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there, yeah, my. My garden failed quite a bit. Yep. So uh, I hope that never comes again. Oh, look, Graham. Oh, sorry, Murray. Um, it will. And it will come. No, again. no. Um, the restriction on oh, the yeah, garden. It will, and it will be here this year. Uh, oh, they're concerning this uh, so-called drought. It's meant to come. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> well, then you're okay with that. Totally. Yeah. 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 Um, now, the other thing that um, Rob spoke about was sand. Yes, on a beach. I met a woman over in Pai here, and uh, she she was a surfer, and she knew about uh, water hydraulics, and uh, they can create sand to come onto places. You need to call Rob and chat about that, that. Um, but you also need to talk to John Vesich. Yeah, and he's got this thing. He's got this thing about the same thing about um, you know making small changes in the water and making yeah, yeah the, the water do the work. Yeah, so yeah, he's a yeah. He's so and then after if it's a water break or anything, well that's all the cost. Yeah, yeah. yeah there, there isn't a non ongoing cost. Yeah, no, we're all working on that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't believe it's going to be right. Okay, well then you, then you're okay then, aren't you? We are. We are. Yeah. Hey, look, um, we have been told, Murray, um, that water on its way. Um, there was a, um, a presentation at Council the other day uh, about some reservoirs just out of outside town that will be supplying, will be able to supply some uh, not much needed water in the. the yes, the, the um, new reservoir. It's going to be started next year, new reservoir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Look, I mean, I mean the, the, the machines aren't there yet, so when the machines are there, then we'll know. Yeah, um, and so, and we as a board and and um, John Research and I are we'll, we'll always at the council, look, you know, there's, there have been resolutions to, to, to deal with these things or address them, and one day we hope that they will be addressed, so uh, we're always onto it, it's always, always at the top of our mind. Yeah, um, and there, now I've heard about a um, hot cultural park. Um, oh, look, um, that's, that's all in the future, right. yeah. Well, that's, well, that's right, just a problem. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, look, Where are they going to get their water from? That's right. Same yeah. 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 Well, and the same reservoir. Yeah, one, one. So, so no. what we'll do, what we'll do, Murray, is we'll, we'll call it. We'll call it. I mean, if you've got questions, by all means, um, come and see. I mean, John, John Buzich here knows all about the industrial park. Yeah. Um, and otherwise, we'll we'll um, wrap up. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Good. But there, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, thank you to the police for because it has calmed down a lot. I, look, I, the discussion I had with the cops, the police, um, is that it's going, to, it's going to take a constant pressure for the rest of our lives. Yes. So um, as long as you know, as long as we're always on that case, whatever yeah. hell, hell, then we'll have they, they will they will stay suppressed with you. Yes. Yes. Um, but uh, you've never told it. You've just got to manage it. Mr. Chairman, yes. the Manawai Reservoir, the resource consent has been granted. It took 55 days, which is a record. It took more than seven years to get. Yeah. 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 yeah, and it's on the way. So yeah, so uh, hopefully we'll, you know, there'll be plenty of water for everybody. Yeah, not this year. It's regrettable in my eyes that I must not going to be dry because it's right there, three thousand acres of water. Yeah, that could be used. But anyway, the new one should be good. Great stuff. Right. All right, we're going to wrap up here. Yep. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, man. Um, and
and we will wrap up this meeting for half an hour for lunch. Oh, right. We'll see everybody here at 25 past. Sorry, Kelly. We didn't get going to you.
Rhythm Association request at this meeting. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, do I have a second to that? I have a second. Okay, all those in favour? Aye. Aye. Okay, so that gives us the, if, if we've done everything for, for Lahoima, okay? Okay, and so your next request is that we get a report as to the, the progress of yeah. the safety work in railway. Yeah. Okay. And, 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 um, is that another um, yeah, recommendation? That, that's basically it. Okay, right. Um, so, so, and, so, and so, with the possibility of actioning some of the items. Okay, so we'll get, we'll get a report where it's up to first, okay? Yep. So, Louis' report is, Louis' um, motion is that should we ask for a report as the progress of the safety work in Rowany Roads. Do I have a second? Yeah, yeah. Have a second. Does anybody else want to speak to that? All those in favour? Aye. 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 Carried. All right. Okay, so um, page 20, setting of meeting schedule. Okay, um, Manima, I know that we've got a 12th of May. Is that for a reason? I know, um, is there something else on the first, is it? Yes, there are okay. council meetings that clash with some of our first. That's okay. In uh, other workshop meetings as well. It's in the report. Okay, right. So I'll move that the Kaiko Hockey Owners Community Board adopt the following meeting next 3rd of February, 3rd of March, 7th of April, 12th of May, 2nd of June, 2nd of 7th of July, 4th of August, 1st of September, 6th of October, 3rd of November, 8th of December. Do I have a second? I second. Okay, anybody want to talk? Okay. I mean, well, the only thing is, we've got a Sorry? Do you have any group things? Anybody? Out of curiosity, sir? No, it's Okay, so last year you delegated me the opportunity, the, the responsibility of changing it um, if it needed to be changed, so nothing here is permanent, um, and I normally run past you guys anyway. So all those in favour? Aye. Anybody against? Carried. Okay, road naming for uh, uh, Paris Road, Waima. That's one that goes over the water, is it? That's a spelling mistake. That's basically what it was, Waima. Right? Yeah. Okay, so do I have a motion? I'll move. Uh, Louis Van... Louis Turbu moves to the Kaikai Hokkien Community Board pursuant to the Council's road naming and property addressing policy 2125 recommends Council the immediately naming of the public road, Terra Road, that is currently addressed as Paris Road, why might as per map. Okay. Anybody want to talk? That surprised me when I read it. <laughs> because, yes, while it's not in Murray, it's still, in terms, it gives ownership to that road. Or it's standard. Yes, I'm surprised that they're complaining about it. Should have been in the picture. Okay, so carried. At page 50, Kaikai Hokianga State Community Ward funding, page 50. Uh, not quite. We're just dealing with the Community Board fund account, page 50. We're recognising the money is there. I don't have motion. I'll move it. Look all to the uh, receive it. Sorry? I'll move to receive it. I'll see it. Okay, so there we go. So the, the motion is that the Kaiko Hokkien Community Board receive the report, Kaiko Hokkien Statement Community Board fund account as of 30 September 2020. Um, do either of you want to say anything? I, I just wanted to ask Catherine about the um, funds not uplifted yet. That one. Which one are we looking at? Page 52, um, item 6.5. That report is two months old now, isn't it? Or a month old, month and a half. Yeah, that's Oh, yeah, it's it the September, so. It doesn't include yeah. last month's one. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I haven't got to see who this is outstanding. Thank you very much, Ms. Uplifted. And I'm getting blanks for this one. I'll talk to you. Any other questions? Any other statements? Um, I do have a question, Catherine. Yes. Um, where, where are we up to with our shortfall funding application? What do you uh, What do you mean by shortfall funding you application? You know how we discussed a short form. Oh, the short form one? Yeah. Yes, and I um, gave Ashley an answer on that one about three months ago when we asked about it. And the answer is it's being done as part of the overall um, funding policy because we need to make sure that all the legal requirements are okay, met. Cool. Okay. So it's being done as that so that there's no back and forth where we bring it in and then have to follow. So, and what's the time frame for that? Um, it will be adopted um, about the same time as the long term plan next year. So it's all being done in conjunction with that. Cool. Okay. So, next financial year should be fine. 
Okay, all those in favour of um, the motion? Right. Anyone against? Yes. Carried. Okay, we'll put funding applications to one side for now. Um, page 86, funding reports. I move that we <laughs> note that the project report received from Harlan and District Community Cool, seconder. Yep. Okay, Alan, cool. More forward, do you want to talk about that? Um, no, just our standard receiving a report. Okay, anybody else want to talk about it? All those in favour? Anybody um, against? Yep. Carried. Okay, information report, page 109. It's just been worked on at the moment. It's been 
be piled. My concern is COVID protocol. It has been in use for at least two years, and yet the expenditure is nearly the same as anywhere else. Uh, Why is there so much expenditure when it hasn't been in use? I was going yeah. to ask a similar sort of question as where, where did they get the figures from? Hang on, hang on. Hang Sorry, on. Yes. Chair. Um, so we've spent a considerable amount of money on Kuru Kuru Wolf, and we've just got another scope to finish the repiling of that work. So there are parts of it that haven't been usable, but we've spent a considerable amount of money on it, trying to get it up to scratch so that it's up to date and open for everybody. Yeah, but what's the operating expenditure? Because it hasn't been in operation. Oh. Um, other than, no, I couldn't answer you, sorry, I don't, I don't have a look at operational budgets. I'm, I'm, I'm not as confident with operational budgets. Oh, that's, that's, There'll be a budget set, but I don't know that they've been spent any. Yeah, I'll answer that. Um, so operating expenses is just those things that are not capital expenses, in this case, interest depreciation, that kind of stuff that, that accumulate whether or not it's being used. Um, that's just the way the accounting works. What's the the property costs and things like that? That hall is yeah. basically locked down, yeah. other than people who go in there to work. The community don't get any use of that hall, and they haven't had for the last two years. Okay, but those costs those costs accumulate, Emma, whether or not it's being used. So um, that's just what it is, I guess. And that's just the report saying this is what we spent. <laughs> You know, the question I was going to ask was along similar lines. Let, where are the costs coming from? I like, like sort of, I know with Openoni and I know with Rawani, there's a lot of money being spent on all these things. Uh, and, and it's leading to losses or deficits in each, each of the wars we're making losses on. Now, okay, so let, let, the biggest amount is depreciation, right? Yep. Yeah, by far. Um, and there is some work being done on depreciation. And that's, just, that's just an accounting entry. So the, the council charges depreciation on all the buildings um, ostensibly um, to pay for things in the future. Um, I'm not quite sure that's the right way to do it. And we, that, is, that is a discussion going through on council now, um, especially since they didn't actually pay anything for the hall. Um, but that's just what it is at this stage. That's just what it is. And if, and, and if what Tanya says is correct, and I have no reason to believe it's not, um, it looks like the amount of money we're spending on the halls is, is, is a greater rate than depreciation anyway. So depreciation in this case is, 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 is being charged for a good reason. Yeah. Yeah. Except in Open Amy's case, I think there's a million dollars sitting in the depreciation fund. Yeah, it should be. And, 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 and in the same with the Rowan situation, it's got a similar sort of amount sitting in the Well, that according to this, not. That's, that's what I'm that's what well, I'm, I'm yeah. going on figures that were in the book yeah. two or three years ago. Exactly. And what's happened to those figures that were in the book exactly. two or three years ago that yeah. aren't there now? Yeah, yeah. And that was the question. You know, it's, it's just crazy. You know, they sort of say, oh, yeah, for future works. And back well, a few years ago, they had certain works set down for 2020, 21, 2025, 26. Okay, so this goes back. They're not there. This goes back to um, our earlier request for um, right. for transparency uh, for delegations yeah. for us so we could be over this. Um, and so far, those delegations haven't been looked at. So, um, on Friday, we've got a meeting with John about um, community board delegations and all that kind of stuff. And then we can get back into a meeting with these and these bonds and do another um, barney. So hopefully, are we all this job? Can someone explain to me about the rates, you know, the target of the rates? Are you taking from Peter to pay for basically? Oh, I'm not quite sure what you mean. Well, or to pay somebody overseas or on the other side of the thing. That's the thing that worries me. We, we're taking money from here to well, pay for the, stuff somewhere else. But yeah. the, the point is, if you, you've ever looked at this, not a lot of money is being spent. I mean, there's a lot of money being depreciated, but there's not a lot of money being spent. Okay, so, I mean, it's, 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 the, the, the depreciation is where all the money is. It's the non-cash um, non expenses that are being charged and need to be covered by the rates. And that's, that's the issue here, and that's an ongoing piece of work. Well, I think if you look at it, the corporate government got basically no money in there. So that is not going to be of use to anybody. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, hopefully, hopefully. I mean, can we assure? Sorry, Tanya, can we assure that the Kohu Kohu is going to be open shortly? Is it? Yeah, I think so. 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 Yeah
Yes, it will be. Um, the project manager is just doing a, an expression of interest, getting a building consent, looking for a builder. Um, it's got a couple of people lined up. Great. I expect it to be finished by the end of the I thought they had a local builder there. Um, we uh, need to comply with the procurement policy. Um, due to the value, we'll need to get a couple of people to quote for it. But there is a local builder that we understand is interested in pricing the work. Well, he's already done some work, isn't he? Yes. We've got a meeting anyway. And I think it's, it's not tomorrow, it'll be Monday. Right. Okay, right. Do, with regard to the halls, I, I don't think it fits under this thing, but. Did everybody get that questionnaire about how they want to change the open only hall? No, I, I think, or did I? I might have. Oh, I think yeah, I was yeah. a deputy community board member, but. Okay, okay so where can you. Well, we may as well talk about it now. Um, is everybody happy with the talk hearing Louis out on us? Yeah. Okay, Louis. Well, well, basically, the RSA wants to get rid of the meeting room at the hall and a third of the hall to create a new location for the RSA. Basically, they, they want to get bigger, they want to get better and provide better facilities and services for its members. Uh, you know, I, like, sort of, I don't want to see the hall get any smaller, but, you know, that's what the questionnaire was about. Uh, I don't want to see the community losing its meeting space in the hall that has been there forever. And, and, you know, there was previously a proposal from the RSA to extend their place out past the supper room, and they were going to do extensions out that way. And okay, so was the consultation done in conjunction with Farmer District Council? They just put out the... Yeah. To the community, so I, I'm not sure. They, the no. submissions close in November. The short answer is no, it was not a council consultation. Okay, so, so it doesn't mean anything. It's got to come back to council. Okay, and hopefully we'll have these delegations sorted out by then, so it'll be your decision. Um, so um, we'll see how it goes. Just keep, keep, keep it posted, Louis, because there's not much we can do about it at this stage. But our private individuals are doing a personal consultation, and everything to do with that has got to come through the council. Okay. okay. Right, all those in favour? Yes. Right. Anybody against? Carried. Okay, right, back to funding applications, page 53. Sorry, through the chair, before we go into PX, there was the item of business, um, which was not on the, demand, on the agenda. So the first, uh, we move this document. Okay. Are you, were you happy to move both? Oh, hang on. The first, that, that one's been done. This one? Yeah. This one. That one there. Oh, hang on. Uh, we'll to deal with that. Okay, we can deal with that. Then. So that's... We just need a mover in this. Okay, she... Yeah, no, okay, Marlene is quite right. We've got one more item to deal with. Um, okay, so the Goyma requires us to notify everybody the public was open that we're going to do something with regards to an item. We've done that. And now we've got to agree to deal with it. And so I move that the Kaiku Book Down Community will resolve to deal with the item of business not on the agenda and cannot be delayed. And that is the yeah. funding application. We've done that. Yes. But that's the, 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 the request from them regarding the funding application. Yeah. Uh, do I and I think that? John, oh, I'll stick in that. John is in. That's the point. That's the Okay, so that, that basically is, a, is a, a motion for us to be able to deal with the funding request to release the funds um, without requiring a lease. Um, so um, I've got a second note. Does anybody have anything to say about us dealing with it? Okay. All those in favour? Aye. That carried. Okay, so we can deal with that as well. So we have this letter of support that they're asking. That was the bell period. Oh, okay, we'll, we'll deal with that separately. Okay. Okay. Okay, so. Um, At the end of this meeting, we'll deal with that. Okay. Are you ready to move into PX? No, no, we've got to do, got to, we'll go to the PX at the, at the right time. So, so what we'll do here is if I can have a motion, perhaps with the banks for the four funding applications. 
Okay, and I'll, I'll lie them on the table, or we, we can lie them on the table, and then we'll go on to public excluded for the purposes of free and frank discussion. Okay, so, first one, who would like to move? I'm just going to break a bit more. Yeah. Okay, with the blank. Okay, so Moko moves the Kaike Hokka and Community Board in considering the provisions of the Community Grant Policy. Are you still live? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Authorise the sum of 3,972 plus, oh sorry, blank, blank, um, to be paid for the Community Board's fund account. Do I have a seconder? Yeah. Okay, I move that we lay that motion on the table. Seconder? Yeah. Okay, all those in favour? Aye. Right. Done. Okay, second one. Who's going to move the one for Mungamu Christmas Party? I will. Okay, so Emma moves the Tobacco Community Board and considering the provisions of the Community Grant Policy, authorises some blank to be paid to Nafu Hokianga Kitaraki. Do I have a second? Okay, I also move that we lay on the table. Do I have a second for that? Second. Okay, all those in favour? Aye. Okay, third one. Move for that. I'll move. Okay, uh, Louis moves that the Kaikai Hokkien Community Award and considering the provisions of the community grant policy authorise a sum of blank be paid to the Hokkien Tracks for Kids for costs towards refreshing the display at the railway turn off. I'll second that. Second that. I move that we put that on, lay that on the table. Do I have a second that? I'll second that. Yeah, all those in favour? Aye. Okay, do I have a move for the fourth one? Yeah. Alan moves that the Kaikai Hokkien Community Award uplifts the report. Oh, hang on, no. Mm -hmm. Actually, we don't need to do that one, Alan. Okay, so we don't need to. We'll, we'll, we can deal with that one and, and do it later. Okay, um, so I now move that the the board move into public exclusion um, to discuss those items for the following reason, and that is to enable free and frank discussion. Do I have a second? Number? Okay, anybody wish to talk about that motion? All those in favour? Aye. Okay, let's move into public exclusion. Thank you.
Okay, so, member. I would like to propose approval um, of funding to the sum of $1,300 um, on the premise that they asked for funding for 12 months um, for space in Pohupuhu, and that this sum will, in effect, give them six months, so half a year to sort of trial and see how it goes. And based on the success of how it goes, they're always welcome to reapproach the community boards for further funding in the future. I still, yeah. uh, I still got a bit of a concern because there's two different sets of figures for that. Well, just choose one. Okay, well, uh, I, I'll give them half of the one on here was 7,122, which makes it 3,561. Okay, right. Ellen, what number? Um, I'll go with Moko said the figure of Moko. 1,300. Okay, Ellen? Yeah. Moko said 1,300. 1,300. Sorry, yes. Kelly? 1,300. Okay, so the number is 1,300. So the motion becomes. Kaiko, you're looking at the Community Board uplifts the report from the final environment that was left alive on the table for me in August 2020 and approves the sum of to be paid to the Board's Community Fund account in the North Bartlett Environment Centre, cost towards Chitai Corporate Road Climb Bank, Corbett Cool and Corbett Wood Branches. All over the table? Right. 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 Before we went into PX discussions, we moved the original motions with blank and then we moved them to be left to line. Now we are moving the recommendations with an amount, but we didn't ask for a mover and a seconder. Are we keeping the original? Yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, and the next motion becomes the one that we talked about, and that is, um, does someone wish to move a motion removing the condition on the tepuna or kupe nuku? Okay, so um, member Hessel moves that the board for the, the board remove the sentence the board said that the fund grant will not be worth the understanding lease agreement for the site assigned from the previous from the conditions of the funding agreement with Te Puna or Kupe Nuku. So so who removed that three? That was Alan Five Seconder? Yep. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favour? Done. Thank you. Um, and I think, is there anything else that we need to do in meeting? What, um, I just need to go back to those questions. Okay. Now, who gives the occupying the best or license to occupy? Good. Yeah. No, the council, that's it. Is that ours? Council, council, council. It's not ours. You know, it's, it's not ours. We, we kind of, we kind I of got a message it. from Anna because I said, said that we were discussing this and she's been involved. And she said the holdup is with legal and IMs. It should have been sorted by the end of the week. Um, and they're considering, uh, and that means that it would go to the next council meeting, which is after your next meeting. But it should be sorted by the end of this week. So there's nothing really left on the paper for us. That, that's the actual license itself. Oh, that's the lease. Just the lease. Right, that's the lease agreement. This is, is the license to occupy, so they can go in to start cleaning up. I, I it, just, it just requires permission. There's no, there's no need for oh, any okay. documents. No, it's just okay. Permission. So they can just do it. Okay. Oh, well, I'm assuming that somebody gives them the key and they're okay. I think we've got a key. I've been working on it, I've been using it. Oh, look, I, I, think, I think our message that went through in the, in the resolution is probably all we can do. Yeah, okay. Okay, and that's the case. Let's close the meeting. Meeting closed. Okay. Um,